welcome back to Medic 81. Today we're going to be working on some Nightcrawler harnesses. Now, my entire life we have always made Nightcrawler harnesses that look like this. About six inches long, six beads or so, sometimes with floats, a clevis, a spinner, tied off the top. This is what I'm used to making, what I've always grown up with. The other day while researching this I found that some people um, when you buy these at the store, you get the basically the same thing, except it comes with three feet of line on it. Same basic configuration at the bottom, but then three feet of line at the top. So, I'm going to go through how I make these small ones. And obviously you can extrapolate that out to adding three feet of line to one if you really wanted to add all the extra. So let's get started. Alright, so to get started we're going to make these nightcrawler harnesses like this one. The ones that I'm used to having, the shorter ones. Obviously this one has uh, more of a circle hook to it. I have these traditional gold colored eagle claw hooks and in this case I'm going to use these a little bit larger uh, I believe these are eagle claw razor hooks I uh, lost the package not exactly sure where it's at so to do this we are going to run the line through and in this case I'm using 20 pound mono um, I usually use a 30 but I found that a lot of people were preferring the 20 you're going to wrap this five, six, seven times, no real magic number, until you get something that looks about like that. We're going to go to the other end, run it through, pull it tight. This hook will not come off of here no matter how hard you try. The line will snap, the hook will break long before you get it off of there. In this case, we're going to do a double hook, so we need to go ahead and thread our second hook on. Spacing is not super important. This uh, looks about right here for not having anything between. If I would put a float, uh, occasionally you can put some other beads in between there. In this case, I'm not going to put anything, so I'm going to give about that much room. Again, we're going to pull this back down here. Nice, neat wrap, four, five, six, seven, eight times, however many you feel comfortable. We're going to thread our line back through, pull it tight. These hooks are not going anywhere, should roughly be facing the same direction, something like that. Now, colors, depending on what you want to do. Um, in my area here, uh, colors that are more in this uh, neon green typically work pretty good. Traditionally, what uh, we've always made them out of have been red with a silver spinner uh, throwing back to my father's days and my grandfather's days I'm going to make a traditional one this time with the red beads and a silver spinner not sure when you do this what the actual ratio is to beads to whatever uh, we've always just done roughly six beads depends in these case these are a little bit larger beads these are an acrylic or a plastic bead. If I had my way, I would use a glass bead. The glass beads are going to give you a little bit more noise underwater when the beads tap together, which is uh, going to give you a little bit more sound. But don't have uh, don't have glass beads, so this is what we use. The sixth bead on here. So this is about where we're at now. We have six beads, our two hooks, which are laying pretty well in line with each other. Now, these beads, these smaller ones here, in this case, again, traditionally we always used white. These teeny tiny beads act somewhat like a bearing. It's a very smooth bead compared to the others. It's going to allow your clevis to spin much more freely than it would if it was just resting up against one of these other beads. These white beads are very smooth, and as you can tell, the acrylic beads are not. Next thing we're going to add 
is a clevis. And then our spinner blade, which are going to go on something like this. Going to thread our line through both, make sure we're in both. And here we have your traditional homemade nightcrawler harness. This is what my family has used for at least the last two to three generations in going walleye fishing. Um, I've even used these and caught catfish while trolling with these. You can cast them if you want to, but this is pretty much it. Uh, some distance up from there, wherever you think it looks good, you're going to want to tie this off. Just a simple knot. Always keep a razor blade handy. that off and there you go this is the way my family has done it um, I've done it this way my father did it this way my grandfather did it this way and his dad did it this way um, these have been used successfully here in Ohio for walleye they have been used in Canada for walleye successfully I've caught bass on these I've also like I said caught catfish on these um, they are kind of universal anything that gives you a little bit of sound you get some sound from the metal you get some spin if you have any kind of light down where you're fishing you have flexibility you have different size blades you have blades that come in holographic patterns you got blades that are just flat painted multiple sizes any color beads uh, occasionally I will insert a float maybe there Maybe I'll take two beads out and add a float in the middle, take up the space. So helps kind of keep that nightcrawler or leech, minnow, whatever, up off the bottom a little bit more. Uh, these can also be rigged up and used with a bottom bouncer, which is probably what I'll be doing this spring, is using a bottom bouncer with them. Get them about a foot or so up off of the bottom, try to catch some spring walleye. Apparently they're hitting in the uh, local river here. Um, they're simple to make, they're cheap. Uh, these beads are next to no cost to me. I've had these beads for probably a good 10 or 15 years. Uh, a lot of these hooks and things I've had for a while. Um, I did go out and buy new uh, spinners. And I did go make a trip to Bass Pro to get more of the clevises. And as well as to get some more of the little uh, bearing beads as I call them. That's it. That's all there is to this. Um, you can do this as any color combination you want. I have a very limited color combination. I would like to get some beads that are more of this color. Um, you have some darker colors, lighter colors, the clear ones, whatever you want. Um, you can do these in a two hook. You can do these in a three hook. Same process, but put a third hook in there. You could put beads, spacers in between the hooks. You could get as fancy as you would want to. Uh, my children, in fact, got very uh, fancy today while they were practicing and they made these wonderful ones here on the end where they literally used one of every single color on theirs. My son made this one here on the end. My daughter made this one in the middle. And then this is an old one that my grandfather had made quite a few years ago. Um, the convenient thing about these shorter ones, they're easy enough to put on one of these snell hook holders. Uh, the ones when they have three feet of line, you're going to have to have something a little bit different to store those with. I know they make holders for it. I don't have any. Like I said, this is the way I've always been taught to make them. It's the way I've always made them. If you have any questions, let me know. If you are interested in purchasing any of these, let me know. I will be uh, put, putting some of these up for sale as I make it to making them. I always end up making more than I can use, and I'm certainly not trying to make a profit off of it, but uh, a couple bucks here or there goes a long way in just replacing the supplies for the next year. If you have any questions, hit me up here on YouTube at Medic81. You can find me on Facebook, Medic81. And you can email me, Medic81 at ProtonMail.com. Any questions, comments, concerns, anything you want to talk about, just let me know. See you on the next one.